Stanza Bupapi was a 27-year-old activist from Mamalodi when he was detained on 9 June 1988 and taken to John Foster Square Police Station. Then he disappeared without trace. His family started a frantic search for him. A month later, the police told the stranger story of how Stanza had escaped while in police custody. They said he was in a car with three policemen, that they were on their way to Vereniging, where he was to point out an arms cache. On their way, they had a puncture, and all three police got out of the car to change the tyre. They claimed that Stanza, some or other managed to get the keys, which were in the uh, jacket on the back seat of one of the policemen, that he managed to um, free himself to unlock, undo the handcuffs, um, and slip out of the car and run off into the uh, bushes. This thrilling tale of escape was presented as truth to the highest organs of government. In August 1988, the Minister of Law and Order, Adrian Flock, told Parliament that a certain person, whom he did not identify, had escaped from custody and that the matter was under investigation. Nearly a year later, Flock repeated the escape story. He told Parliament that on 12 June 1988, Mr. Mr. Bupalpe escaped, escaped from police custody while he was being taken out to indicate to investigating officers certain spots in connection with the acts of terror in which he was allegedly involved. An intensive investigation which was conducted in respect of Mr. Bupalpe's movements after his escape has now resulted in the police having tracked down persons who have stated under oath that they have seen Mr. Bupalpe after his escape. But the police cover-up was first challenged by Baking Corsi, who was detained with Stanza at the Hillbrow flat they shared. He told the Bupape family's lawyers under oath that during interrogation, Warrant Officer van der Seifert had told him that Stanza had been killed. I thought he was trying to scare me into talking uh, and actually didn't believe uh, that he was saying that. But when one of his colleagues, a, a certain Mosi, came into, into the interrogation room and spoke in Afrikaans that uh, I think I became convinced that uh, they, they were meaning uh, business and, uh, and had actually killed Stanza. The police version cracked even further when former security policeman Paul Erasmus spoke out in July 1995. It was brought through to John Foster Square and um, during interrogation, physical interrogation, um, he died and his body was disposed of down a disused mine shaft. We now know that the escape story was a lie. Five security policemen have applied for amnesty for killing Bupape during interrogation. Two others for disposing of his body and three generals for covering up the death. I understand that the authorization to cover up the fact that Stanza Bupape had been killed while in police custody was given by General van der Merwe. But why this incredible web of disinformation around Stanza Bupape's murder? The amnesty applicants will say that their motive for the cover-up was to prevent widespread unrest on the eve of June 16, the date of the Soweto 1976 uprising. But I knew when, when, when the police knocked on the door and with the seriousness uh, with which they demonstrated, I knew that uh, it, it, this was not an ordinary detention. You know, it, it had nothing to do with the state of emergency. It was something much more important. Stanza was not an ordinary member of, of the Civic Association. He was a general secretary of the Mamelodi Civic Association, but um, over and above that, he was a, a, a senior member of uh, Umkonto uh, Sizwe, the Southern Transvaal Regional Command. Uh, police would have taken interest in him at that level, and, 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 and that alone uh, uh, made him a, an, an obvious target. Uh, I know that he worked closely with uh, Udirile Maponya, um, uh, whom we, we, we both met on several occasions. At about the same time, 
Flakplas had launched a huge manhunt for Odorile Maponya, a high-ranking MK guerrilla. During the search, Eugene de Kock killed his younger brother, Yapi Maponya, with a spade. Stanza's mother and two brothers, visibly upset by this late confirmation of his death, believe that the amnesty applicants are still not being entirely truthful. They state that Mr. Bopape was tied to a chair for the administration of the electric shocks, and they have alleged that he slumped forward after only two or three shocks had been administered. They state that they tried to revive him, with mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Indeed, they allege that the shocks administered to him should not have been fatal, and their suspicion is that he suffered from a possible heart ailment. He was in good health, so he was not having any problem with, uh, with the heart or any problem whatsoever uh, with his health. They were telling lies, and even now, uh, the fact that they said he was, uh, they threw him somewhere in a coma to put them, still we don't even believe the story. Besides the Kumati River and the mine shaft versions of where Stanza's remains are, a former Kits constable, Johnny Mokaling, claimed that he was buried in Peking. However, the TRC excavation team could not find any evidence. Nine years after his disappearance, all the Bupapes wish is to give Stanza a dignified burial.